I hope you took occasion to solve this problem on your own. If not, you are wasting your time. You're not wasting my time, but you're wasting your time. By far, it is much more valuable to your learning experience to try and struggle with this before just seeing my answer. I learned a lot going through this with my son and hit all the snags and that kind of thing. But we, we came up with a solution that works, and we're going to see that I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of this problem. First things first, I'm an engineer, and I'm like to keep my engineering simple. I know if I can solve a problem for simple numbers and it works, then great. We saw that when I was taking 3 to the 100. We first did 3 to the 5 in our loop, verified it worked, and then could feel comfortable typing in 100 and getting the right answer for 100, except it overflowed in that case. And the same will be a problem here. We'll overflow much quicker. So how can we simplify this problem? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to change our base from 3. Let's change it to 2s. So 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2. If I can solve this for 2s, then ideally all it's a matter of is changing my 2s to 3s. And, oops, let's make that a little bigger. Changing my 2s to 3s. Anyway, we should get the, the, the same result if we're using 2s or 3s. And we could verify it with 3s, but just to get it started here, let's... Let's start with twos, then we can work on up to threes. So first thing I want to do is also create the table that we had in the previous videos. That was a good engineering approach. First, let me let me draw our problem up here. I'm going to pause the video while I draw the problem. There we go. Two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, so on and so forth. Let's draw our table that we had in previous videos. The table is going to look much like previous tables we've done, except instead of doing additions, we've got to do multiplications on through it. So here, let's do our columns. This will be our loop column again, like so. This will be our power column. Power. And our total. And then our hex total. I'll just put H total there. Remember we did the hex total because that's what the debugger shows us is the values in hexadecimal, so on and so forth. So this is 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, and if I can squeeze in 2 to the 5, let's do the rows of our table. Hopefully go as straight as possible as I can, drawing with this tool. I actually use the mouse to do the drawing. You'd think I would use a Wacom tablet, but I found I'm actually a little bit better with the mouse, which is probably saying something about my Wac Wacom tablet skills. Alright, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4, 2 to the 3 is 8, 2 to the 4 is 16, hopefully these numbers look familiar it's from the binary videos playlist, and then 32 here. Now, here's where things get interesting. We need to add and then multiply, and then add and then multiply. So. Right here, from from here to here, we have an addition, okay? And then from here to here, we have an addition, all right? And then so on and so forth. There's an addition up to the number n power, the n power we're trying to go to. And then in green, let's do the multiplications. So right here, we have a multiplication. And right here we have a multiplication. That's a multiply symbol. Hopefully that looks like one. So other than that, the problem is very much similar to what we did in the previous videos with 3 to the 1 plus 3 to the 2 plus 3 to the 3 plus so on and so forth. Except now we're alternating plus multiply plus multiply. Let's fill out our total column here. Let me get blue again. So total right here is 2, and then 2 plus 4 will be 6, and then 6 times 8 is 48, and then 48 plus 16 is 64, let me do a better 4 there, 60, 64, and 64 times 32, oh, do that off the top of your head, let me bring up the calculator. 64 times 32, I'm sure I could do this in my, oh, duh, 204, yeah, that makes sense. 2048, you can see though the numbers are 
growing quite rapidly. We're also not considering order of operations. Ideally, we would do the multiplications before we do the additions, but in this problem, we're being like the uh, standard dumb calculator, which just takes in the operations as we go. Okay, so what's the hex total? Well, two in hex, or two in decimal is still two in hex, and six in decimal is still six in hex, and then 48 in hex is three, zero, three times 16 is 48. 64 in hex is four, zero, so four, 16, so hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. And then 2048 in hex is eight, zero, zero. So you should definitely start be starting to see some patterns. We'll get to that a little later. So we have our problem up here at the top. We have the pattern we need to walk through. We need to decide which registers are going to represent what and also use memory if possible or if necessary. Let me register these labels or these registers that we used them in the previous problem where all we had was additions. We had EBX Keep track of our base here, so two, 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 two. Uh, the power we represented in EAX, and the reason we did that was because EAX is the implicit first operand of the multiply instruction. And then our total we put in E, that's an E, ECX. And then we had to keep track of one, two, three, four, five. We put the, the uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the current nth iteration, the number N or the power we are raised to. We made a count variable for that. All right, and, and so I think we're good. Okay, well, EDX we can't use because remember with the multiply, it puts the overflow in the EDX and it's so storing values in EDX. We saw that with a counter before. It's useless, so we can't use EDX. Uh, now look at the problem we have here. As, as, as I've drawn out here, this pattern of plus, multiply, plus, multiply. And can you think of any problems we're going to run into with the register assignments as we have them right now? EBX on carrying the base, the 2 in this case, EAX keeping track of 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, ECX keeping track of the total, the running total, and then count keeping track of the incremental N value. Okay. There is a problem, I'll just tell you straight up, there is a problem, and it's a snag I ran into with my son. Can you identify it? Okay, if not, well, either way, I'll address it in the next video.